Last up, we've got a segment we call It's Barely News, which are yeah. items we thought were kind of news worthy, but that we don't have like a lot of stuff to say about them. Uh, says about right, Plenty? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, so first up, we've got a story from Pyrodrone. We wanted to let you know that Pyrodrone is making uh, gimbals for the Tango 2 and the Mambo. Um, and they're CNC gimbals. Oh. So all those jealous AG-01 uh, pilots. All the, all the te- TBS pilots who are jealous of the AG-01 gimbals that Radio Master pilots were getting can now, well, not now, will soon be able to get a, a nice CNC metal gimbal for their uh, radios as well. That is very interesting. We don't really have any more information, do we, Bloody, other than these photos? Yeah, that's about all we got to go on. We got to find out, you know, when they release and, and how that all goes. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we'll definitely follow up on that. But we thought you guys out there, so many Tango and Mambo pilots ask me, can I put AG01 gimbals in them? And you can't because the, the way that the Tango and the Mambo interface with their gimbals is is clever and novel, but it also means that it only works with that style of gimbal. And, uh, and so it's nice that uh, Pyro is uh, moving forward with this. I'm sure a lot of people will be excited. Um, yeah. What's next? All right. Next, we've got another follow-up. This one, too. Uh, you know, we talked about that spinning drone quite a few times. Ooh, um, yes, we did. And he's got uh, some more solutions for uh, for controlling them, basically. He's been continuing to try to do uh, control and getting it more dialed in and figure stuff out. Um, but now he's figured out, uh, basically, through his periodic control, he's figured out a way to get it to do, to do directional control now. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I guess it makes sense that if you're getting the majority of your lift from the wings themselves, that losing a motor shouldn't really stop you from being able to keep flying. Yeah, it's efficient enough, actually, you can lose two. You can lose two? And yeah, still stay in see. the air. Yep, he can see. Yep, pretty cool. And then as soon as you stop spinning, you're done. You're falling out of the air. But... Yeah, you're, you're done. Exactly, yeah. Terminal Insanity asks, what's the point of that? Now, uh, now I that was my first reaction, too. was like, this is cool and weird, but what's the point? Uh, one of the things, if you go to Nicholas Reem's channel, you can see he shows that it is significantly more efficient in terms of battery life. To, to have one giant rotating propeller instead of a bunch of little tiny, tiny ones. Like I think three times more efficient. Yeah. If I or something right. like that. Yep. Um, but uh, also I feel like he's dancing around this idea and, and eventually he's going to stumble into something incredibly cool and useful that nobody saw coming. Sure. Well, uh, I mean, but I don't know what it is seen- yeah, already, you know, something we talked about was just the idea of loitering drones. You know, if you've got a loitering drone that's going to loiter for a lot of its time, then it does seem like uh, it would be good if it could spin and be way more efficient while it was loitering. So in applications where you need a loitering drone that can spin, it yeah. seems like it would be a great improvement. And then you kind of go from there, right? So maybe there's other ways to get it to be more efficient here and there. And, you know, he uses yeah. wings so that in forward flight, like we talked about last time, it's still more efficient than it would be as a quad and stuff. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of neat innovations there. And, uh, you kind of got to do this stuff, right. To figure, to figure stuff out. Mike Bergman says, brother man is in the chat. Does he mean Nicholas Reem is in the chat? Surely not. Oh, he is in the chat. Nicholas Reem is nice. here. Wow. Nicholas. Very cool. Uh, I want to I want a fractal quad blunty a fractal aircraft. What I mean by that is, I want the five inch props to have little two inch props on them, and then the 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 five inch props to be connected to a great big bigger prop. You see where I'm going? Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> this is the remember we were talking about you being mean to me. Your lack yes. of, I feel, I feel personally attacked by your lack of enthusiasm about my joke. <laughs> Somehow that, I feel good? more attacked okay. by your fake yeah, laughter. Well, no, know, well, go back. To, that's the, go, that's the other option. <laughs> as you were, as you were, I okay. take it back. Your, your okay. disinterest is less insulting <laughs> than your feigned enthusiasm. <laughs> Honesty, always the best policy. I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
okay. All right. All right. Check out check out Nicholas Reams' video linked in the video. You can make one of these if you are True. silly enough to try to do that. Um, scattering ashes by drone. Definitely barely news, right? Blunty, from, from now on, Blunty, whenever, and I'm not trying to bring up stuff we talked about before the show on the air, but I just want to get in. Whenever we have a conversation and you say, I don't really think that's newsworthy. Scattering ashes by drone apparently made a cut of a kind. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever heard of this? I have never heard of it. You're well, there right. There you go. It's and this is it's barely news. So this is the place to be, right? <laughs> what the? So uh, <laughs> a former RAF pilot uh, started a business where he does this for yeah, he does this for families. So families have decided that one of the ways they uh, they they want to get they want to say bye to their family members is to do it in a kind of a spectacular fashion by going up in the air and uh -huh. flying a drone and dropping the ashes down. So. There we go. I'm just gonna All say right. that's cool. That this this seems like this seems uh, rife for someone to do, like uh, you know, in movies and like comedy shows and stuff where they throw the ashes and they come back and hit them. Yeah. This yeah. Seems, oh yeah. This seems like you could easily ash a crowd of people by accident. <laughs> Depending on which way the wind was going. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I was to, you know, pass away and be cremated, would I want my ashes scattered by drone? Or would that be like too? I think what I would like is for them to be impregnated into a carbon fiber sheet and then uh, a, 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 a freestyle frame cut out of the carbon fiber sheet, you know, and then turned into a drone that no one that you don't fly. You just set it on the shelf. You know, think of me. Um what frame should it be? Like, what what does that, should it be? A Source One? I don't you know? know. I don't know. A Q, probably QAVS. My frame probably makes a lot of sense there. Um, and then flown into a volcano. No, that's it. Now that's probably illegal to intentionally fly a drone into a volcano because like it's littering or disrespectful to the gods. But um, that's it. That's what I would prefer. If uh, you take my ashes. Maybe drop the ashes into a volcano by drone. Could you do that? People who live in Iceland, let me know. Can you throw ashes into a volcano? Seems like you could. I mean, if you weren't ashes before, you could be ashes after. It's true. Oh, that's it. Take my car throw my corpse into a volcano and let the volcano cremate me. Sounds kind of awesome. I'm sorry. I've lost. I, we're, we're, we're off track. Uh, <laughs> dr drones being used in hurricane relief efforts. Always good to have stories of drones doing positive things in the world. Personally, I just spy on my neighbors while they sunbathe in their backyard, as all drone pilots do. But apparently they have other uses, too, uh, like this one. Oops. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Let's try again. Let's try this. Here, I, uh, I got another one in there. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so basically uh Skydio has been putting out drones uh for relief efforts for the hurricanes and uh it's been really helpful for them. They basically, you know, didn't really know that we've you've seen drones were used in relief efforts. Some it's been getting more and more kind of popular, but there's a lot of cases where, you know, you don't want to go out to do inspections or to do checks or to do whatever in floodwaters and in dangerous situations. You, know, you don't want to put people out there or you don't want to fly a helicopter. Uh, drones are much easier. So they're using these uh, all the time, basically, to do all kinds of different uh, missions where they're going out and checking stuff out and finding stranded people and communicating and do, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. So. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. With uh, more of these floods happening and more hurricanes, being able to get out there and, and, and uh, look at, literally look at your neighbors in their backyard, but uh, for humanitarian purposes. Um, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Good to see people doing that. Uh, we've got, uh, we're always interested in drones being made out of weird things. Here we've got a drone made out of sticks, a stick drone. Yeah, we've talked before about uh, different things. I think we've seen like a helmet and I don't know, we've seen quite a few different things uh, with the drone, you know, with drone motors attached and flying. And uh, this is no ah! different. 
So if you wow. if you complain if you complain about your quad, you could be flying sticks. You know. I mean, it's flying. It is. Of course. It is flying. And then I see. And then we got this loading screen. Oh yeah, no. Like I don't know how good it's flying, but just yeah. got some sticks. We got some sticks and we turned gonna, them into a drone. I don't think you're running under one filtering, but yeah, I was gonna say Chris Rosser somewhere is Chris Rosser is uh, very upset right now. Yeah. Um, Can we get him to do drone. FEA on that? Oh. I mean, you need to know things about the characteristics of the wood that I don't think you can possibly know. Uh, very cool. Uh, did you know, Blunty, that in Geneva, eagles are being trained to attack drones and take them out of the air? I did know that because I put the story in the list, but it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, but they're stopping it. Oh. Damn. I was just, yeah, I was so just, we wanted to just... let you know if you were, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you had heard this story or whatever, they've been doing this for like five years now um, and trying to use eagles to intercept drones. And I think they've realized this is not going to work out. And it's probably not the best to have a drone attacking a flying or an eagle attacking a flying drone. Now, I, so they have, uh, can they've stopped think of, I can think of a lot of reasons why this is a good idea. Like eagles are very, very good at intercepting fast moving objects in the air and taking them out of the air. And many drone pilots have had their Eagles or Raptors attack their drones and can vouch for this. Why is this a bad idea though? Why did they stop doing it? Uh, Cause it's an Eagle. I don't know. You don't want an Eagle to fly into propellers, right? Oh, like, I think that's, I, I think to me that, I mean, that seems like the reason and that's sort of what they talk about is that the birds were not safe. Uh, in these situations. So I had wondered that, but I like people said, Oh no, the Eagles can just avoid the props. They're fine. And I was like, really? Oh yeah. Their yeah. eyesight's really good. They just reach out with their claw and just like snatch it. I, like, I think okay, they've determined so. that it's not accurate. How many Eagles lost their little talons as a result of this experiment? We may never know. Yeah. Um, all righty. Well, uh, so much for that great idea. Uh, uh, we got one more, one more. It's barely news. I, I, this one, I'm not going to say that this one makes me want to blank myself because then we'll get demonetized and people will, uh, think I'm making light of self harm, but this one totally, I just don't want to live in this world anymore. Blunty. But we knew it had to happen, and it finally Did it? happened. Did it, we've had, every, we've had everything else in drones, and now we've got an ad <laughs> as a drone light show. That's right. In Manhattan, on a Thursday night, Candy Crush put an ad in drones in the sky. Like Candy so, Crush? Who still plays Candy Crush? Um, I think you would be shocked. I probably <laughs> wouldn't be. Like Candy Crush came pre-installed on my phone. I immediately uninstalled it, and I got on with my life. Candy Crush's revenue in 2021 was $1.21 billion, up from be, the year before. Be, be, with a B? With a B, yes, sir. Yeah. Candy Crush. $1.2 billion. Oh, my God. This is like when my grandparents saw Elvis. And they were just like, <laughs> nothing is right. It all just is... It's a very, I got to say, it's a very cool light show, though. I am impressed with the light show. Uh, it's extraordinary. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm sure that it's we'll being be used seeing... to advertise a effing mobile game. Oh, we'll be seeing so much more of this. Uh, expect your night skies to be filled with drones light, drone light shows if you're in a major city advertising uh, major brands. Uh, I'm sure that's yeah. going to happen. So. All right. 